What's good everyone? We are back for another week of fantasy football. It was game week eight this week and that means we're getting around, we're, we're well over halfway through the season now, fantasy football fans. It's getting a bit intense, getting a bit deep, injuries are cropping up. Let's see what went on in the leagues this week, starting with the Andy Dalton fan club. And first up in the Andy Dalton fan club, I am once again a winner. Four game win streak now, which is just exactly where I want to be. Um, especially on the on the tail end of the season when any game can kind of swing you in or out of a playoff spot, being six and two through eight weeks now puts me in a spot that I'm much happier to be in. Um we were up against Skip. Um so let's have a look at the numbers here. Um first and foremost, uh James um screwed me over. He convinced me to play Caleb Williams against Washington because Caleb's just been getting better. He's come off a bye week. He's had time to prep for the commanders. Surely he's going to ball out. Plus, Baker is missing Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. Surely he's going to struggle. Caleb scored 10 points. Baker scored 30 points. Made the game a lot closer than it should have been off the rip here. And this might be one of my worst weeks for points left on the bench, I've got to be honest. Um... But fortunately, CJ Stroud only scored 14 points, so I didn't get burnt too badly there. Um, Najee Harris, who we uh, traded to skip many, many moons ago for James Cook and someone else, uh, scored 20 points for him. Fortunately, J.K. Dobbins and Bijan Robinson turned up with 37 points between them, which is actually statistically an off week for them, which is um, a nice, a nice place to be. Uh, fortunately, Skip has a bit of a running back problem. Uh, so Tyler Algier was his backup running back and only scored six points. Cooper Cup, back from injury, managed 11 points on his debut for me. Very thankful for that, especially with Chris Godwin's injury. Um, Jalen Waddle, I was hoping he would also see a bit of a resurgence this week with Tua, but that's not yet taken place. But on the other side, he had McLaurin and Jefferson, who scored 27 points between them, pretty solid. Um, National tight end day. I believe I had the only tight end who didn't ball out all week, ironically. Um, Cole came out with three and a half points. Normally wouldn't be that big a deal, but Travis Kelsey, 16 points. I think I genuinely think most tight ends in our league this week scored 10 points, and I I still had three and a half. Um, Josh Jacobs managed 32.9 points for me in my flex slot, and that will be his final act on this roster. I'll get into that in a minute. Tyler Lockett, one point there, so that was a big swing in our favour. Kick was a little bit down, but it's not the end of the world. Steelers' defence balled out 24 points to the Bears, which only managed 11. That is the difference maker right there. Um, on the bench, as I was saying, Marvin Harrison, 19 points. Would have been an extra 14 points. That put me on 144. James Cook... Extra 15 points, so that had been an extra 30, so 160. Uh, I could have scored 180 points. I believe 180 points was my optimal lineup this week, which is insane and shows how strong my roster is. But, as I was saying, changes are coming. We have traded Josh Jacobs, Jalen Waddle, and Xavier Worthy to Skip in exchange for Justin Jefferson. So we'll be losing one of our running one of our four stud running backs, leaving us with only three. Which I mean is all I can play anyway. And it will be giving us another stud wide receiver to hopefully go alongside Cooper Cup to steady out the rest of the team and make it a lot easier. Plus, and this is a big thing for me, it gets rid of decisions that need to be made by me and will hopefully mean I can make less mistakes like these ones here. There's, there's going to be no Worthy. There's there's obviously Godwin's on IR. There's going to be no Worthy. There's going to be no Waddle. There's going to be no Josh Jacobs, which means there are less decisions for me to make and I just have a good team all round, which means I can make less mistakes. Um, and hopefully that means I won't cost myself as much. But we did win the game and that is all that matters at the end of the day. Skip falls to a two-game losing streak. I rise to a uh, four-game winning streak. Uh, Skip, I believe, is still in a playoff spot, just I am now third in the table, I believe. Maybe even second. I can't remember which. And I'm looking forward to the games to come. And I think Skip, with now having a proper, proper running back to go alongside Najee and some good depth at wide receiver, 
I think he's going to um, ball out in these last few weeks. Next up, James extends his win streak to seven. Tom extends his loss streak to five. Tom doesn't check his team. Tom still has Christian McCaffrey in. This team is scary to me, though. Because, yeah, James won. He scored really well, 111 points. Everyone did their job. You'd like to maybe see more from the wide receivers, but it doesn't matter. They scored. I believe he made a mistake by not playing um, Joe Burrow, but it was only to the tune of three points. Brian Robinson was the right guy to leave out. See, the advice I gave him was the correct advice. Um, as other wide receivers, everyone's chipping in bits and pieces here. Um, and this team has a high ceiling. This was, ironically, looking at this, I'm saying this is a down week for his team, and he still scored 111 points. But over here, this is a scary team. I'm really worried about Tom on the back end of the season, because I think it's basically impossible for him to make the playoffs now. There's, what, six regular season games left. He can get to eight and six. So if he wins out, he can absolutely sneak into the playoffs. But let's look at this team. Kyler Murray, who has high scoring potential. Derek Henry. Christian McCaffrey is expected to be back maybe the week after next, I believe. Amari Cooper, who's now at Buffalo, could do very well there. Malik Neighbors, who has been the Giants' certifiable number one wide receiver all season. Ferguson is a top tight end in this league, especially coming out of Dallas. If ETN gets fit, we know how dangerous he can be. He's someone I wanted. Brandon Aubrey, another really, really good kicker. And the 49ers defense always does okay. They've not been as good as they have previous teams, but they always do okay. He will lose this coming week because they're on a bye. Um, obviously, McCaffrey's hurt. I think he might be missing someone else as well. Probably ETN if he's not back. But after that, this team... Oh my god, he's also got Zay Flowers on them. If he was to log in and just hit optimised lineup each week, I think he would make playoffs. Maybe with a 7-7 seven and seven record. But I think he'd also win a couple of important tiebreakers to um, give himself a chance here. But scoring 75 points while missing two guys and one guy not doing anything just shows how much point potential this team has. If McCaffrey comes back and is McCaffrey, this is a 40 point running back room basically every week which is enough to get you into the playoffs interesting 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 next up a monumental powerhouse of the game insanity scott back on the winning side anchor back on the losing side after both breaking their ducts last week 133 plays 162 anchor would have beat all but one other person in the league this week really really rough I feel like that's been the story of Anchor's last few weeks. She started off poor, just full stop, but now she's scoring a lot of points and someone else just scoring more than that. Um, Josh Allen, 24. Brees Hall, 12. Jameer Gibbs, 30. 42 points more than acceptable because you're running back room. 21 from a wide receiver is a little bit low, and obviously Diggs is now out for the season with that ACL tear, so that might be a bit of a concern. Brock Bowers, 6 points at tight end. Solid from him. Matteson. Um, eight points at flex. The touch low, but you can work with it. If he's consistently putting that up, it's not too big an issue. Boswell, 11 points at kicker. Texas defense, 18 points. Solid. No weak spots. Unfortunately, Jalen Hurts went sicko mode with one passing touchdown and three rushing touchdowns. 42 points is insanity. Once again, running back room scores 40 points, which kind of negates this over here. The wide receiver room did do a little bit worse overall. They didn't quite outscore. K. Dot and unfortunately had an insane week for Tampa Bay, um, scoring 21 points. And then Alan Kamara at Flex scored 15 points. And then the gap starts to become pretty obvious. In fact, the gap is 27 points. And the gap between K. Dot and Brock Bowers is 15 points. And then 7 points. That's 22 of the points. Like, Jalen Hurts alone wasn't enough to actually, like, undermine anger here. It's just a little bit of everything. It's it's rough. But coming down to the benches, I don't think Anker had anything left. I mean, Laporta would have been the better choice for the first time this season. And that's it, basically. Um. Oh, sorry. Long lay would have been better than um, Diggs. But the good news for her is um, she has Deontay Johnson who's just been traded to the Ravens, so he could 
maybe step up to fill that void being left by Stefan Diggs. And Scott had 50 points in running back stashed on his bench, another 20-point tight end, another 10 points at wide receiver. His team is absolutely loaded for the back half of this season. Shane Hurts already had his bye weeks. As long as he doesn't get hurt, he's fine. Very, very dangerous team this season, which will, I'm sure, be looking to go the entire distance and win the whole fucking thing. Boom. After eight weeks, Ryan has won his first game against Fraser. Oh, won his first game against Fraser, making him 1-7 and seven for the season and forcing Fraser to drop to 3-5. and five. Let's, uh, let's see what happened here. <laughs> A whole lot of... I think yeah, he's he's got actually one of the better wide receiver rooms now that Garrett Wilson's settling in and Puka Nakua's back. Twenty six seven points from your wide receivers is pretty good in this league. Connor and Achan are both also back to their best with another forty point wide receiver room. Ten points at tight end. Your flex dropping seventeen. Yeah, everyone showed up apart from his quarterback. That was the only place um Fraser had him comfortably be. But that is the only position. Oh no, defense he won as well. Um, so Fraser beat him at quarterback, but that's because Jordan Love got hurt. If he flex in Trevor Lawrence there for an extra 20 points, he scores 151 points and is one of the highest scoring teams of the week. I mean he was anyway. But that is that's again another scary thing where people have all got fit very quickly and now he can't make the playoff. He's lost too many games. He can ruin someone's chance at the playoffs. Someone like me who is right on the bubble right now, as if I lose too many games, if I play Ryan the wrong week, I could be in big trouble um, to, some, to a team like this. So definitely a bit of a concern. Fraze is going to be kicking himself that he's left Swift on the bench with 31 points. Um, where could he have come in? He could have come in for Walker for an extra 14 points. That would have made it very, very close. Um, but I don't think he did have enough, no matter how much you um, juggle players. I don't think he had enough to make this a win this week, which um, sucks. But with Nico Collins coming back in a few weeks, maybe he can win a few late games and sneak his way in. So we'll have to wait and see. And then finally, in the Andy Dalton fan club, we have Pash, who is now 5-3. and three. Taking on Dad, who is also 5-3, and three, but they've got there in very different ways. Pash, I believe, won his first four games. Then loss, win, loss, win, loss, maybe. Um, Pash, um, Pash started off hot. Dad has come in. He started off slow, but he's now on a two-game winning streak. Up from 3-3 three and three to 5-3, and three, which he'll be very happy with, no doubt. Again, 156 points. Big, big score. Lamar Jackson leading the way. C.D. Lamb had a massive game. Kyle Pitts a massive game. He's got to be really happy. If Devonta Adams can stop balling out for the um, Jets, you've got to think this is a very difficult team to beat. He gets away slightly of only having a 35-point running back room. Well, we've seen a lot of 40-point running back rooms. But if you look at what he's getting out of his wide receivers, it, it eclipses everything else. 18 points between the flex and wide receiver, 1 plus 29 is what, 57? 47, which is a lot higher than everyone else. I mean, C.D. Lamb's outscored basically every other wide receiver room by himself this week. So he's got to be happy with that. And then on the bench, he also had Brock Purdy, who scored two points more on the Lamar Jackson, so he could have had even more points. Tank Dell with Diggs out and Nico Collins still out. Tank Dell might have gone up massively in value. Bucky Irving on 11 points is not a bad guy to have around. Got to be pretty happy with this roster and the options it provides, provided that Brian Thomas injury isn't too bad. Unfortunately for Pash, his, I mean, Mason look, got hurt, got taken out of the game. Everyone else is okay. I mean, 114 points isn't bad. He just doesn't have anyone doing what C.D. Lamb's done and what Lamar Jackson's done. I mean, he's got Jane Daniels, but he only outscored Lamar by four points. Then you've got Jackson who drops him off by 14 points compared to Pollard. And all of a sudden the thing's wide open again, isn't it? If you compare the, the wide receivers here, Mooney, Pickens and Bateman combined for 25 points. C.D. Lamb is four points ahead of his two wide receivers and his flex by himself. Which means Adams and Thomas 18 points there is like pure profit if you view it that way. Which um, 
is just incredibly difficult to beat. No matter what way you spin it. He could have had an extra two points at tight end. I don't think there was any way, based on what I'm seeing here, that he could have changed the tide overall. And I am seeing ways that could have had more points. So I think this game was only ever going to win, end this way. But the Andy Dalton fan club is definitely taking shape coming into the second half of the season. And it will be very interesting to see what teams over the next few weeks lock up an absolute definite playoff spot versus fall off into obscurity and hope for a better year next year. Let's go check in with the Goalie 12 League. Unfortunately, it is sombre news over in the Ghoulie 12 League as I am a loser this week. I dropped 5-3. and three. Oscar gets his third win of the year with a truly monumental 159 points. I only scored 94. Let's have a look at what went wrong. So, off rip, CJ Stroud underperformed massively, 12 points. Running back room did a pretty good job, 40 points there or thereabouts um but Kamara and Williams I mean they didn't really cover that but the big problem as I'm sure you can see is CD Lamb scored 39 points by himself that is very difficult to overcome and then when you get a little bit lower you see he also had Kayla Botton K Botton whoever it is um who managed 29 points so that's 40 that that's 70 points from just his tight end and wide receiver. That's basically never going to be beaten unless he literally has injuries and people who don't play throughout the rest of his roster. But he doesn't. He has the Steelers defense who scores 15 points. He has Zay Flowers who has 18 points. He has Alvin Kamara who has 18 points. He has Josh Allen who has 19 points. Insanity. And it, even more insanely, he could have had more points. He had an extra five points for Stafford. An extra two points for Brown. That's an extra seven points. He could have tapped that 166. Unfortunately for me, I don't think there was really anything I could have changed. I could have, or should have, played Pollard at flex for an extra three or four points. And I should have played Aaron Rodgers at quarterback instead of CJ Stroud for an extra five. That netted me, what, total an extra ten? If I'm lucky. And that would have had me breaking 100. But it wouldn't have changed anything. There was no magical way to change this. The big things I'm waiting on. And it might be too little too late. Is for Mike Evans and Nico Collins to come back to fitness. And hopefully allow me to. Stay. Around a playoff spot. And hope, hope for the best. With results going my way. Later on in the season. But shout out to Oscar, his team absolutely destroyed me this week. It was a mixed bag of everyone on my team kind of underperformed and some guys on his team went nuts, sicko mode with it. And you got to respect it. Next up, Josh is back in the winner's seat and Ian loses again on a four game losing streak. Let's see what this happened. Josh is up 135 points. Is this... Yeah, this is Tua coming back has kind of brought him alive again. Devon A. Chan is, I believe statistically, throughout the entirety of fantasy football since he's joined the league, he is running back number one when Tua starts. Which is insane. And he's got him as well as Brian Robinson and J.K. Dobbins. That is a phenomenal running back room. He's then got Tyreek Hill and Xavier Worthy. Tyreek Hill didn't like the world on fire, but first week back with Tua, I'm sure Josh will be very happy to see them, them signs moving in the right direction. Trey McBride also in for a big week with 21 points. Charge defense did a good job. Everyone did their job, and, uh, and I'm sure Josh will be very happy for it. Over on Ian's side, not so great. Pat Mahomes did beat Tua. Truba Hubbard, poor. Teddy Spears didn't play. Daryl Mooney and Juju Smith and Jeeba did pretty well, 30 points. Which did beat Josh's wide receivers, but all of that good grace is undone the second you get to tight ends. And then the killing blow comes at flex, kicker, defense. Like, they're pretty, pretty close up until that point. 
and then it is just 21 points in Josh's favour, another two, another six, 30 points, bang, like that. Take that off, and there's only a 14-point difference. And that's got to hurt. An extra six points could have been had from Herbert, could have had an extra point at kicker, could have... I think that's actually it, ironically. He'll be desperate for McCaffrey to come back. Deontay Johnson is someone that I expect he's excited to go and get playing at the Ravens. There's just nothing there. There is nothing there at all. And it's kind of difficult to see how this team can go on a winning rampage to maybe sneak into the playoffs. Whereas Josh made mistakes and still had points to spare. Could have had an extra 14 at quarterback, putting him up to around 150. Could have had another three at running back with Charbonnet. And he could have had Coleman with 18 points instead of either his wide receiver for another five. He could have been tapping out at about 155, 160 here um, had he made the perfect lineup. But I don't think any of his matchups were outrageous. Keon Coleman is looking a lot better now they've got Mario Cooper taking some heat. So maybe Keon Coleman's becoming a must start. But I wouldn't have said that was the case this week. Kirk Cousins. I think maybe this week would have been a better decision than Tua. But going forward, I'd say Tua is a safer bet for sure. Especially with the uh, double dip potential Tyreek Hill and Devon A. Chan as well. Be interesting to see how Josh does going forward. He's got a good enough team to win out. So he might just sneak into the playoffs. Next up, Tony and Joss. Trade wins. So what Joss ends his loss streak and begins a win streak. Tony ends his win streak and enters a loss streak. Pretty big swing of points here as well. Which is not ideal, you could say, pretty confidently. Especially because it doesn't really do anything for either of them. They're both 4-4 four and four now. Which, I mean, kind of helps me because it stops them from getting too close to um, a playoff spot. At least for now. And hopefully can keep me comfy. But let's see what happens. Purdy beats out Lamar. Kareem Hunt is comparable with Henry. Barkley is competing against no one. Running back rooms are pretty even. Tight end is a massive swinging point in favour of um of Joss. As is flex. As is kicker. As is defence. There you go. And last four. The ones that no one ever thinks about. Tight end, flex, kicker, defence are responsible for what? 39, 55, 80. Three of his 145 points. When when the back half of your team comes out that strong, your other guys can have quiet weeks. And it's really paid off. You do have to wonder though, like how many points were left on the bench here? Lad McConkey, no. No, not Lad McConkey on 29 points sitting on the bench. Oh no. That could have been extra 21 points. Wouldn't have won him the game, but God that hurts. Could have had an extra three at kicker, but there wasn't there wasn't a whole lot here. Could have had an extra bit at tight end, but again, not enough to change anything, which is insanity when you see someone sat on your bench for 29 points. The fact that they can't win you the game just shows how beat you were this week. And on his bench, Joss has another 35, 46 points worth of wide receivers, just big chilling, as well as two guys who can't even play the game. Truly remarkable scoring. And are any of these players surprised if they scored that well? I bet you think you might say Kareem and Saquon were a little bit low. DJ Moore was a little bit low. Malik Neighbors was about where you might expect. You're going to have better weeks, but that's about where you'd expect. Kraft had a pretty good week. James Cook can absolutely do that regularly. Jake Elliott, 13 points isn't a shock. Lions defense, 16 points isn't massively shocking. Which means he can absolutely keep doing this week after week. And if he does, he will find himself in a playoff spot for sure. Next up, we have Cameron entering a one game losing streak and Josh going to 4 and 4 on a win streak. 30 point margin of victory here. Yeah, you can kind of just see it straight away 20, 20, 20, 18, 13, 13 compared to. 8, 7, 7, 13, 15. Justin Jefferson had a really good week at 19 points, but Jamar Chase on the other side of the clips is that. Stephen, your one dude who did like show up 
isn't even winning his head to head. The only head to head he wins in like the skill positions is tight end, and even then that's by half a point. That's made up by every other guy. So it's just it's death by a thousand cuts here. At no position has he been blown out, but he's lost decent and he's lost regular. He's lost by about four points on a lot of positions. Which just it adds up quick. It adds up real quick. Um it's still a really good team. He's got a lot of depth. Tracy with 23 on the bench, Puka Nakura 18, Court and Sutton 17. He will absolutely need to have a look at how he's playing his team and see if he can get more of these guys into his lineup. Or just go, you know what? I still trust the guys that I started. It's just the guys I started had a down week. And if they did have a down week, it's not a problem. If you expect Reed and Drake London to average 16, 17 points like these guys do, it's not a problem. It's just a damn week. But when it rains, it's poor. So it looks like three out of his got three of his guys at least had pretty damn weeks. While Mix and Jacobs, Taylor, Chase all had pretty good weeks. The, the love and the danger of fantasy football, ladies and gentlemen. Next up, Wag's game. Wag extends to a five-game loss streak. Everyone in the comments say, we stand with Wag. Um, I'm going to keep giving Wag shit, but I do. I am feeling bad for him now. He's dropped all the way to dead last. That's where Josh has been living for a little while, but Wag cannot win a game for the love of it, love of God. He's playing me this week. So... Um, if I lose, I'm going to claim it's to make him feel better. And if I win, I'm just stamping on him even more. But let's not let that take away from Josh. He scored 154 points. Where did these points come from? Jalen Hurts, massive. George Kittle, massive. Swift, McLaurin. When Brees Hall is like dragging you down at 10 points, you're laughing. 35, 22, 24, 18, 17, 16. Yeah, it's craziness. His kicker, defence and running back two are the only people who didn't break 10 points. Brees Hall barely didn't break 10 points. On the flip side, defence, kicker, one of his wide receivers, one of his running backs didn't break 10 points. Only two guys broke 20 points and no one broke 30. You see... Pardon me. You see how this difference forms so quickly. Then 52 points on in one spot here. Up by 13. Up by 20. Up by... What? 28. Up by 36. 42. It just adds up little by little. One at a time. And then before you know it, you're down 50 points and you don't know how you've got here. Was there any points we'd left on his bench? Could have had a couple more at kicker. But that is it. Could have had a couple more at defence. He still has two defences on his bench for some reason. The mad lad. But more harrowingly, Josh Josh could have had more points if he'd have played Shakir, who has 19.9 points. Could have put him in for Cooper Cup and ended up with another three points on there. So that's a pretty dangerous team and they are a lot of big names who I'd expect to continue to perform very admirably throughout the rest of the season. If I was him, I'd be putting Swift in my running back slot, dropping Brees Hall out and putting Shakir at flex. Maybe, m maybe Singletree if it's a match-up thing. But I don't think Singletree is supposed to be the main back in, uh, in New York for much longer. Definitely a dangerous team. I'm, I'm a little bit worried about making the playoffs in this league. And then the game of the week. Look how close that is. 0.22. Three more rushing yards from one of Brees, uh, from one of Luke's running backs. And he wins the game. Three more rush yards and he wins the game. Truly, truly diabolically close. Shall we see what occurred? Who, who didn't perform? Amon Ra St. Brown. Oh, no. Amon Ra having, what was it, two receptions for seven yards and a score. 
if he could have just broken 10 yards, Luke wins this game. Travis Kelsey having a monster game doesn't help. You've got to feel bad for Luke here. He's not done anything wrong. He's been massively screwed over by Travis Kelsey having a monster game. And a little bit by Amon Raj kind of disappearing. Debo getting a bit unwell probably didn't help. Does he left points on the bench? Oh, he has 22 points out of Josh Downs, 23 out of Trevor Lawrence. Play either of them, you win the game. Oh, no. That's really, really... Oh, there was a lot of points left on... A lot of points left on mix um bench as well. Could have had another eight at quarterback. Ten at running back. Eleven at running back, rather. And then another... Oh, no, he wouldn't have been able to upgrade at tight end, surprisingly. Could have had more points in a lot of places, though. So, who to say who really deserved to win? You've got to feel bad when the scores are this tight, though, and and one guy have, has a... Like, if instead Stevenson was on 20 points and Alan Ra's on 11 points, so like, everyone's kind of done their job here. You just didn't quite get it over the line. But seeing one guy not break 10 points when everyone else did, you do just find yourself going, that's a bit rough. But that is it for Fantasy Football this week. If you've enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing. It's completely free. You can undo it any time and it doesn't cost a penny, but it helps out a bunch. But that's it from me and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.